it's angelica underscore marianne with faye global incorporated we're about to do a question and answer a live hey rob with rob moss hi Hello. Yes. oh my god early? no it's like perfect timing i'm so glad that you're so prompt <laughs> yeah of course you know we can't be on cpt not in the quarantine come on not in the quarantine what you doing if you late on the quarantine huh you what said what am i doing really to get late yeah, if somebody was really late, what would they be doing on a quarantine? I mean, you know, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I miss your face. I miss you too. Somebody trying to call me right now. You, oh, uh, uh, tell them you got an interview. I miss you too, sis. Is you is you here? Can you see me? Hi, Julia. Can you see me? Thanks for joining us. What up, Julian? I see you. Yo, this hair. You still cute, though. You still no. cute. You know, cut you. <laughs> it's not it. This hair is not it, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to embrace it. We trying to do the best we can. You look beautiful. How you doing today? Thank you. I'm doing great. Just kind of getting some work done. Just came in from a ride. You know, yeah. I'll be riding my bike. <laughs> you know, I'll be riding I that bike. That. I saw it. I need to get me a bike because... Uh, man, that's been the real. one thing that's been missing in my life. Just like riding a bike. Just... Just yeah. hop on, you know, you don't have to put no gas in that thing. You nope. can ride around the world. Period. Just don't ride it under the influence of nothing. Let me send okay. this to a few people. <laughs> okay. Let me send this live Let's to a bunch of people. people joining us before we get started. Hey, go Jace. Thanks for joining us. I'm about we'll to send started. this to, a, I'm about to send it to a bunch of people. Okay. You know, some people usually, a lot of people catch it on the, um, on the replay. On the replay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got to do it on the replay. I'm noticing Period. thousands of people watching on the replay. So, Period. you know. All right, cool. We'll get started in about two more minutes. But how your day going, brother? What up, Jason? You see Jason? Do you know Jason? Jason! I wonder how many Detroit people we really know because... Jason? I think I do know Jason. Jason? I think I do. He went to DSA. We drink. Y'all, let me oh. get my bottle. Hold on. <laughs> oh, you about to turn Look, we turn all quarantine. We drop in knowledge and everything as well, but... But this is a tough quarantine. Uh, let me send it to a few more people. Hey, so King I get... DXM, thanks for joining us. King Dom, that's my homie Dom. I don't know, Jason. I'm probably just saying that. You know all Detroit people know each other. All Detroit people <laughs> know each other. I don't care what nobody say. Can you see Period. me? Or is they blocking my screen off right now? No, I can see you. Okay, you can Jason see me. Okay, good. Jason, how I know him. I'm just saying, like, Jason, if I know you, if I don't know you, we both from Detroit. 313, what's up? Well, y'all, she went to Cass. <laughs> So, I'm sure we got a cousin that know a cousin or an auntie that know an auntie. Wait, you went to Cass, didn't you? Mm hmm Yeah, she went to Cass, y'all. So, come on, Doc. So, <laughs> he come said, on, who was that? Snooky. Oh, did you see that? Snooky. See? I just want to say, I used to dance. Used to, then you used to dance with Caution or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I grew yeah. up with Snooky since I was like middle school elementary so Man, yes that's crazy three. that's crazy okay well let's get started because we got a couple people in here actually before we do perfect hold on we, i'm trying to get some more okay <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay all right all right all right we almost there we almost we almost ready to go i'm about to spam everybody though y'all not about to sleep on us like this like no but the fuck? all right it's okay go ahead while i go ahead right. i'm gonna pin I'm going to pin our Instagram handles here so when people join us, they know what we're doing here. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Put a little pin up. Okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm you ready, ready now? Hold on. Let me send a few more. Because, Angelica, this is such a wonderful, because I want to know more about this new platform that of you course. have started. It looks like you started a wonderful new business. And, you know, I'm always supporting artistry no matter what. So, yes. all right. I'm good. I'm good. Let me see. I'm almost good. I'm just typing in All right, cool. your Instagram. Guys, thanks for being with us for one second. Don't call us Teddy Riley. Um, uh, <laughs> you underscore Rob Moss. Underscore Rob Moss, yep. Cool. So when they come on here, if they stop by, because people like to stop by. When they stop by, they pull up on us. They know what we're doing. They know what's going on, right? Get that new quarantine Rob cool. Moss. EP. Cool. So we have... We have our singer, our guest today, singer, Rob yeah. Moss. I mean, no. he does some production aspects. He's a songwriter. He's a singer. He's an artist. He's amazing. I've known him for forever. Now you guys are, you know, learning who he is, and the world is knowing who he is, his music. So it's such an honor to have you today here, brother. It's an honor to be here, sister. Like, for real, for real, for real. Like, for yes. real. 
Yes, so this is we're hosting this for those of you that's been stopping in our lives every day. We've been doing them at 6 p.m. on behalf yeah. of Fate Global. It stands for the Foundation for Artistic Talent and Empowerment. And so we, we have a company um, that I started. I found that we have a board of directors. We try to basically provide um, financial services for artists and mentorship services for artists. So this kind of goes hand in hand with like our mentorship aspect. That's you kind of sharing right your now. experience. Oh, let me turn this music us. down. Oh, always right. jamming. What are you know I'm always jamming. You've always been over here, so you session. know how I go. I mean, the right. last now, time I was talking? in LA, we had a jam session together. We did, and it was amazing. That was amazing. <laughs> we got to talk about that. Okay, so so what are you saying about the organization? So Yeah, absolutely. So, guys, you guys can follow Fate Global. Um, It's pinned there. It's f.a.t.e underscore global for industry updates. Also, I posted Rob Moss's um, Instagram there. I want you to go ahead and follow him. And then my Instagram is there, too. Go ahead and follow my handle as well. Yes. We're just going to jump right into this interview, brother. Let's go. Let's we're go. just hoping that, you know, you're going to inspire this group of people, this collective group of artists today with some of your experiences and what you kind of overcame along your journey. Amen. I mean, hopefully, you know, we we'll see. <laughs> I love your energy, y'all. Y'all going to love him. So, we'll see. You know, brother, just kind of tell them how you kind of got started in the entertainment industry. How did that start for you? Oh, my God. Um, I think I got I was very very young when I started singing like of course I started singing in church when I was seven years old I remember being like around six or seven when I started singing in church and then I started writing songs and I was about eight or nine um but as far as actually being in showbiz this wonderful woman named Angela Bell Dunlap she discovered me um when I was in seventh grade and she put me in this play at the Detroit Opera House so I, I know you from Detroit so you know you know how big that is That's um, a big was, yeah so I started in theater um, actually, I did a stage play at the opera house called Fatherhood, and it had Lisa Ray in it, Genuine, um, Robin Givens. It was like just this one of those big urban plays. And um, that was pretty much my first time being on like a professional stage in seventh grade. And from there on, performing arts high school, um, I used to, you know, go to the studio every day. I would be in school all day singing. And then my Uncle Roddy, he would pick me up. And we would go to the studio. He'd give me a CD with beats on it, you know what I'm saying? And pick me up from school every day. Take me to the studio after being in, you know, school singing all day. And then, you know, so that's just pretty much how it started. You know, as a kid, I was singing everywhere. I was a little kid in the hood who was just singing everywhere all the time. Wow. That's such a cool story. So you actually got discovered. That's like people's dream just for somebody to notice them and notice their talent. So you actually got discovered. And that was your first opportunity to show the world your talent. Absolutely. Yeah. Angela Barrel Dunlap, who has um, discovered a lot of people. If anybody who's from Detroit who knows um, what she does in the theater community, I mean, and I was very young and she took me under her wing. And um, I was I was out of middle school because I was doing a tour like my eighth grade. I missed my eighth grade graduation because I was on tour, uh, a regional tour with the stage play. So, yeah, I mean, I guess that was like my first discovery as a kid. You know, I still don't feel like I didn't got discovered. Mm -hmm. yeah you know what i mean so but you got discovered with the talent like it wasn't like something that you know people noticed that in you you know you were just doing mm -hmm. it but people noticed that in you so was it always your dream to be a singer or did you kind of dabble in other things along your journey or did you just always know as a kid i'm a singer this is what i'm good at i was always singing i'm a singer this is what i'm good at like i, I played basketball a little bit you know what i'm saying when i was a kid but um, I was always singing. I have a very fond memory of like the year 2000, which I had to be like six or seven. And I remember I had a notebook full of like 60 songs in it. And I was in foster care um, for a few years. And I remember all my foster brothers they used to take my notebooks with my songs in them and hide them to make me mad. But like, so I, I really think I was always singing. I never dabbled in anything else. Now I did a lot of different types of singing. Like I did, I studied opera, you know what I'm saying, and classical okay. singing for four years. I went to college wow. for musical theater, you know what I'm saying? And I was always kind of rapping and stuff. So I never did other things, but I did music in a lot of different ways. Jazz music, you know what I'm saying? All different types before I even graduated high school. Wow, nice. Hey, awesome. Yes, yeah, so many people are saying nice things. They're like Detroit schools that are fine and performing arts representing for you. That thanks, Tiffany. Um, but shout out to Cass Tech because that's right. Shout out to my sister <laughs> Tiffany. You need to get her on here. <laughs> okay, let me see. Tiffany. I okay. send, I will send you her info. She uh she graduated from DSA as well. She made her Broadway debut this year in Motown oh, Musical. Congrats, Tiff. Yes, Queen. yes, yes. Send me her contact. I will. I definitely I'll send it to you as soon as we get off. 
Okay, yeah. So you were kind of talking about how you, um, you these different skill sets starting off. Look at him, y'all. Get that wine. Get that wine. <laughs> Love it. Um, you're saying these different skill sets kind of served you quite early on. Can you kind of speak to how that serves you now, just having a variety of skill sets and not just limiting yourself as an artist to like one sound? Mm, 1,000%. I'm actually glad you said that because when... When I went to the performing arts high school, you know, that was the school that Leah went to. We were not trying to learn the classical music. We were kind of forced to learn it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And we grew to love it. But now that I'm older and, you know, sometimes I'll get in the studio with people and really know how to do my own harmonies and really know, you know what I'm saying, how, you know, certain things about music or I'll do a show and not need auto tune or I'll be able to do this. And I have that musicality now because of what I was doing as a kid mm -hmm. studying classical music. And as far as the hustle and grind, let me tell you, my stepdad, like my whole family was, you know, very supportive of me, but my stepdad had this method where he made me hustle. So he never, um, he had like three cars, you know, he, he had money, you know, but he never drove me anywhere. He made me catch the bus to every audition I wanted to go to. Wow. Anytime I wanted to go to the studio or needed to do something, he would make me catch the bus with three wow. cars outside. And wow. I would be like, why is you doing this? Like, this is cruel and unusual. But yeah. he taught me how to hustle. You wow. know what I'm saying? He taught me how to hustle. He taught me how to be on my own. And my mom always raised me to be a leader. So I feel like um, it was a lot of things I didn't understand coming up in the artist community in Detroit. Mm -hmm. But now when I moved to New York when I was 18 years old and I dropped out of college and moved to New York City, it was like I have just the subconscious mentality of a hustler. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, so got to, yeah, I think that I answers that. the question. No, no, right, cruel and unusual. I love that. Yeah, cruel and unusual. But hey, he grew from it. Look at the experiences that came out of that. So, you know, I kind of I like that you shared that. So you kind of talked about having like adversities early on in your life. Could you kind of share with the audience some people that may be going through things that you've overcome some of the adversities that you faced as an artist along the journey? Was there any surprises for you about entertainment? And yeah. are there still things that you're overcoming? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, life is always, you know, ups and downs, peaks and valleys, ups and downs. So, you know, Growing up, you know, it was all it was just regular Detroit stuff. Can I cuss on here? Yeah. Regular Detroit shit, you know what I'm saying? Oh, um, growing up, you know. <laughs> um, so it was a lot of, a lot of, you know, getting robbed, getting shot at, getting, you know, everything you can experience in Detroit. I did experience that. Kind of made me stronger. But when I got into the industry, which I still don't consider myself in the industry, I'm building my own industry within the industry. Come but on, when I'm I, doing my own you know industry. what I mean? Come within on, the industry, my own industry, within the industry, you know, because, yeah, but, you know, there were a lot of adversities that I faced. You, this is what I want every inde independent artist to know starting out. Yes. No one is going to care in the beginning. Mm. You know, like when you first decide, oh, I'm going to do music and you're telling everybody, oh, I'm doing music, oh, I'm doing this or whatever you're doing. Like mm. more people are going to doubt you than people are going to, you know, support you. So you got to figure out a way to overcome that. And that was my biggest struggle in the beginning of just mm -hmm. feeling like nobody cared, you know what I'm saying, about mm -hmm. what I was doing. But then I started doing music and I started getting fans online and it gave me that confidence to like, mm -hmm. okay, people will follow along eventually. And through years of progress, people finally started to be like, oh, I like your music. Oh, I like this. Oh, come perform here. So you really have to have the mentality of, I know that this is what I was born to do and I have to keep doing it no matter how many people doubt me. Because mm. everybody is going to doubt you in the beginning, which is why when artists come to me like, oh, Rob, I want to do music, da, 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 I never, ever, I'm never a hater. I'm never mm. a supporter. I always listen to everybody because even if the music is not my cup of tea, you know mm. what I'm saying? If it's quality, it'll reach somebody. So having that mentality to get past your family and your friends not supporting you, um, having to maintain yourself financially, you know, I am I N D E P E N D E N T. Do you know what that mean, man? Hey, 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 hey. Chicken head, chicken head. So you know all the music, everything has to be paid for. So you got to balance. You know, you also have to have that balance, and um, you know, so it's a lot of things. I could go on for days, you know, but there's a we lot love of it. things. We you love know, it. there are a lot of things. Yes, a lot of things, and you know, the last thing I would really want to touch on, as far as artists are concerned, is like business. A lot of independent artists, we think that you know. We don't. We can't make money. But last year, you know, I did a tour that I put together myself, and you know, I went to about seven or eight places, and I made, you know, what I'm saying about two fifty to five hundred per show, and it wasn't a lot of money, but 
I learned that, oh, I'm an independent artist. I can make money. So there's mm. certain things like royalties, like sound exchange, like publishing, like, you know what I'm saying, tour support that as independent artists, we have to educate ourselves on. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I wish I would have knew it when I first started, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because you learn it's business. So. And I like that you brought that up. Can you kind of speak to some of the tools? Like, do you use YouTube? Are you reading books? How are you educating yourself? Oh my God. In aspects of books? I, I could go in my room upstairs. I read a lot of books, actually. Um, <clears throat> I read a lot. Um, just about the music industry, you know, a lot of a lot of us don't know that these record labels are actually ran by a board of people. A lot of, you know, A&Rs marketing people so i adapted the mindset of a small record label within myself so i'm constantly reading books constantly educating myself <clears throat> um, on youtube on and, and even if it's just sliding in somebody's dms that i admire and picking their brain picking their knowledge all of that but let me tell y'all knowledge is power the more knowledge you have as an artist the more power you have the more leverage you can have you know what I mean? Um, so there's certain people on YouTube, like Wendy Day, the brand man, who I really, really follow and, and really, really, you know, gain their knowledge. And um, I just read L.A. Reid's um, autobiography. I also read Timberland's autobiography. Um, Lear Cohen, who's the founder of Def Jam. I just read his book, you know, so um, and, and it's all shaped not only how I make music, but it's shaping my intention with the music. Mm -hmm. So when I do drop again, when I do drop another video nice. and do my thing again, it's not going to be the same. It's going to be with, you know, more knowledge. So. Mm -hmm. Man, I love that. You literally have dropped so many different gems already just in reference to like really? books and just inspiration and motivation. And I mean, if I was an artist, I'd be inspired by now. Like you have said so many cool things. Again, if you guys are having questions, put them in the question box. I yes, give us some comments. questions. Give us questions in the question box, not the comments, because I don't want you to be left behind, and I want us to answer everything for you. We have him for that reason. So, Come brother, on, can professionalism. you Okay. I'm a, I'm a businesswoman, okay? Yes, <laughs> you, know, brand, you know that. Yes. So, kind of just talk to us a little bit about if you could go back and tell your younger self something, the younger version of Rob, what would you tell him? I would tell him... Shit, I don't know. I feel like I'm still the younger version of Rob, but I, I would say... <laughs> I would probably what would just, you tell yourself yesterday? I would be more business minded. Honestly, when in 2014, when I first started putting out music, um, I didn't really have an understanding of branding and marketing, you know, and I would just put stuff out, you know. Um, but like a lot of those songs are still really good. And I just think like, wow, if I would have knew what I knew then. So I would probably tell myself to be more business minded. But honestly, I'm a firm believer in all things working together. So I felt like everything that I experienced in my life kind of, you know, happened for a reason. So, mm -hmm. but I would just tell myself, bro, keep your money right. Like, you know, mm -hmm. make sure your mind is on your money. Don't just mm -hmm. be an artist just to be one, you know? Mm, I love that, man. You know I love I mean? that. Yeah, that was good. Like, so kind of like you spoke to a bit earlier about being in the studio and you taking that initiative to put yourself on tour and you just being a I N D E P E N T. Because nobody so cares. <laughs> nobody is going to care. It's like I had to make my own tour because nobody wanted to put me on a tour. Mm -hmm. People were telling me, oh, yeah, I can put you on tour with Eric Billinger, but you have to pay a thousand dollars. And I'm like, why would I pay a thousand dollars to be on a tour when I can go and make? A thousand dollars you know all you really need is a fan base and to be able to identify your markets if i know i got 20 fans in atlanta i'm going to atlanta to perform for those 20 fans and mm -hmm. those 20 fans are going to turn into 50 by the time i'm done mm -hmm. you know what i mean and, and and vice versa it doesn't have to be oh i'm playing a stadium or oh i'm opening up for the hottest artists like i took my own bread contacted every venue in atlanta and chicago and where mm -hmm. i knew i could get people at took my own bread, contacted those people, worked it out, and made money back from the ticket sales. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I love that. And it was small, but mm -hmm. I was able to pay my rent for a couple mm -hmm. months off that little tour. You know what I yeah. mean? So, That's amazing. That's a big accomplishment, though. You know, you did that as a one-man one show. One-man show. You know, just that's amazing. So could you kind of speak to, like, when you are in the studio and stuff like that, what is your process like? when you go in there are you like do you write when you get there do you write something before you go how does that go and kind of speak to like studio etiquette and people kind of like not wasting mm. their, their money yeah <laughs> well it's all different ways as far as sometimes i write outside sometimes i write 
as I'm, you know, making the beat, you know, sometimes I'll be working from scratch. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'll hear a beat and like it and write to it. But a lot of my writing happens when I'm like outside walking around mm -hmm. or when I'm just doing something random and I, like nice. the songs just come to me. When I used to work my restaurant job, it was crazy because I loved working that job, but I used to get creative every time I was at work. So I would have to leave the middle of the job and go in my bathroom and like, you know, record. Um, but as far as studio etiquette, I live in a studio. Like, I can show you a little bit. We have like a little bit of a home studio. Here. I love so, it. Look like, how open Rob is with us about his journey. Yeah, it's just a little something, something, you know. Come on, show and, me You know, I see a lot of different artists in a lot of different situations. Um, I just feel like the more intention, the better. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, I'm not paying for studio time unless I really feel like I have a hit. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like if you can be self-efficient and learn how to record yourself, I, you know, invest in a cheap mic for yourself, invest in a program, you know what I'm saying, just so you can have something and get your ideas out so that mm -hmm. you don't have to waste time in the studio. Because I know people who spend a lot of money on studio time, but they aren't mm -hmm. making songs. You know yeah. what I mean? So, you know, if you can get a little home set up, a little bedroom set up to get your ideas out and then say say you go through an idea and you write 10 songs right mm -hmm. over a week and then like three of them you feel like okay these are hits these mm -hmm. are then you take i'll take those to the bigger studio so usually what i'll do is i'll build up demos in my house i'll build up ideas and my voice memos whatever and um shout out to beat god stacy miles franklin um brian fender um all the producers who uh, are always lacing me up with incredible love music. it love yeah. it yeah so yeah so you 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 know once i feel like i have a song then i'll take it to a studio and pay for that expensive studio time when i feel like i have a hit yeah you know what i mean but if mm -hmm. it's just being in the studio to be in there like i'm not personally not a fan of that because i live in the studio people come here um to record we do have a, a, a setup if you want a cheap studio but i am not spending no money to be in the studio if i'm not creating hits when i'm mm. in a studio I'm creating material that's going to be released. You know Love what I mean? It. Love you it. Know? Man, that was some good advice, seriously, to someone that doesn't know what the next steps are for them after they actually wrote a song. Let's take a couple questions from mm. the audience now. Um, someone says, uh, which streaming platforms is best for independent artists? Which streaming platforms? You know what? That's a diff that's a, that's an interesting thing because, okay, I'm going to break this down quickly. Okay. Basically, think about McDonald's, think about Burger King, and think about Wendy's, right? Okay. McDonald's is the biggest. Not yeah. the best, but they're the biggest. Right. Burger King, close second. Wendy's, the best out of the three, but nowhere near those two. Mm. So that's what I would compare Spotify, Apple Music, and Tidal to. I like that. Tidal, I mean, Spotify is the biggest platform around the world so that's going to get expose you to the most listeners so mm -hmm. it's important to have a spotify following because that's the mcdonald's of it that's the big broadness but they have the lowest royalty rate so mm -hmm. spotify pays you the least right uh -huh. a million streams is going to make you about two to three g's on spotify wow. apple music is like the burger king of it not as big as McDonald's, but still pretty big. So Apple Music is important because it has a fair royalty rate, but it's it's not, you're limited to iPhone users. Not mm -hmm. everybody has an iPhone. So mm -hmm. that's the thing with Apple Music, you miss out on, you know what I'm saying, Android users, YouTube, you know. And mm -hmm. then Tidal is like Wendy's because Tidal is the best. They have the highest royalty rate by far. They pay mm -hmm. artists the most, but they have the smallest share in the market. So mm -hmm. Tidal, you know, only has a million subscribers when Spotify has 60 million and Apple Music has 40 million. So all of the streaming platforms are important, you mm -hmm. know, but each one plays a different role. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I hope that answers the question. Wow, Rob. Like, no, seriously. Like, you just, I mean, I just learned something new. Yeah. I'm sure they learned something new. The way you yeah, wrote child, that down, the way you wrote that down with food, McDonald's, <laughs> Wendy. <laughs> this is all I do, y'all. This is all I do is is learn about the music industry, you know, because you know this is this is my life. This is what my future is. But that's really is the truth. And then you have all of them. Though. You have Pandora. You have YouTube. You have all of these different things that you know all play a part. But those are the main three, you know. So absolutely, like man, that was like amazing. Like the way you broke that down, and they don't walk away knowing the difference between Spotify, Title, and all of them. Then I, yeah. they wasn't listening. They wasn't listening. Yeah. So. Well, I didn't know. This is stuff I had to learn. I'm like, why am I not making no money? Mm. Period. You know what I'm saying? It's like you do it 
you put your heart into it and it's like why am i not making no money and that's just one that's just one form of income for artists there are other forms of income there's publishing you know as well and then there's um ascap and bmi but that's a whole nother thing so. mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. we had another uh singer on last week we had a uh, vanex favors come on and he talked about some of those other ways yeah. shout so out absolutely. to the next favors too shout, shout out to out. the songwriter ep shout out so actually vanex had a question he said how do you develop your sound how do you develop your sound great that's a great question um for me personally, um, I'm a big, I love to research. So I love to be inspired by the past. Mm. You know, I'll go back and listen to all different types of music, not just mm. hip hop and R&B of today. I'll go back to the 80s, go back to the 90s, go back to the 70s, go to the 2000s and be inspired by the history of music. And for me, that's what develops my sound because as I hear more music, like I was listening to um, the Isley Brothers yesterday Mm. And it just inspired me so much because I was like, wow, this is a whole different way to sing. People don't sing yeah. like this anymore. So um, I think being inspired and having as much knowledge and love for music is a good way to develop your sound and just working as much as possible. Working in the studio, whether it's your home studio, whether it's the studio you go to, whether it's whatever, working as much as possible, making like me on quarantine, I try to make five songs a day. I'm my mm, home studio. Wow. And next week, I'm going to try to up it to 10. Not, I'm not probably ever going to release uh, these songs, but I'm going to do them because it's going to develop my sound and I'm learning more mm -hmm. about my ear, learning more about mm -hmm. stuff. So just work on it. And um, wow. also another thing to develop your sound, and this one is kind of hurtful, don't be scared of people's opinion. You know, don't be scared to ask people what they think. You know, you have to have your confidence as an artist to do what you love, but you want to make sure that it's not, you know, whack or it can't identify with somebody. So if you got mm -hmm. a family or a friend or somebody close to you that you know while you're making stuff, you can say, oh, how does this sound? You know, or what do you think? Mm -hmm. You know, that, that can kind of help you, too, because you hear people from the outside and you think like, oh, I do need to make catchier hooks. Oh, you like this part? OK, well, let me make another song like this. So you mm -hmm. can also develop your sound by being in tune mm -hmm. with what the fans want. Am I, I driving love... too much? No, like when I say <laughs> when I say this live is everything this live yeah, is, this is what everything. i love because it's not just you're on here just talking you're literally giving real information valuable information that they can go apply to their lives as artists Hell yeah. that is the purpose of this if Hell it's not yeah, at least one to three things that you've said today they can take whether it be the books the tools you mentioned whether it be the different things about the streaming platforms it's so many things that you mentioned in, in regards to just everything working together you've said so many cool things that definitely can help an artist and awesome. i'm just so grateful Yes, I'm grateful I'm so for the grateful platform. For Honestly, you. thank you. I'm glad yes. I get to talk about all this stuff because this is all, you know, this is all I care about, honestly. It's a stuff. blessing. It's truly a blessing, guys. He's blessing you today. Someone says, how do you know, uh, Zane said, how do you know when you have a hit? Mm, this is coming question. from somebody who makes hits. That was right. Funny. That was a good question. <laughs> how do you, you know, you get the goosebumps. Mm. You know, Puff Daddy always talks about that. He talks about you know that feeling when you get that goosebumps. And for me personally, when I can get, when I have a song that gets everybody on one accord. So like, if I have a song and I notice that my people from the hood like it, my white friends like it, mm. you know, and the people yeah. my age like it, the older people like it, that's when I kind of know like, okay, this is a hit. This is something broad. But honestly, you got to trust your gut. When you get that goosebump feeling, that's how... That's how I feel like, you know, when you have a hit, when you have that song that makes you go, oh, or when you have something that you know, like, oh, I could see this going viral on TikTok. It's really about how you feel about it. You know what I'm saying? Um, because if you've built up enough knowledge of music, you know what sounds good, you know what doesn't. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I would say, you know, that's probably a good way to do it. You know, mm -hmm. go by the goosebumps. And also I heard, um, what's the nigga name? Ron Fair. Mm. He says he knows he has a hit when a song makes him cry. Oh! <laughs> and that's the guy who, like, you know, discovered um, a lot of really great R&B acts. So he he's like, once a song makes me cry, that's how I know it's a hit. So I'm not saying that, you know, applies to everybody. But if it makes you move, something that makes everybody move. You know, what I used to do in college is I would go to house parties. And if there was an aux chord, I would just plug my music up and just play it. 
and just get the whether it was a rough draft. Actually, I, I still do that. Whether it's a rough draft and I'm in a setting and I can get an aux chord, I would just play it and not say that it's me and just get people's natural reaction to it. Sometimes you'll see people start shazamming it. You'll see people say, oh, who is this? What is this? One time I saw this girl, she looked like she was so disgusted. She was like, what is this? Turn this off. And I was like, you know, but you know, so you got to test the waters. Every job that I ever had, I always played my music. If I had a restaurant job, I would just say, can I play my music? You know, so mm -hmm. test the waters. What advice do you give? Because you said that girl was like, oh, what's this? What advice do you give when someone kind of criticizes your work, um, your art, or just they're not vibing with what you're putting out? How does that make you feel? And how do you handle that? How, how, how have you overcame that? Well, you know, I pretty much accepted that everybody's not going to like everything that I do. And I think as an artist, once you get past that hurdle, it's like it's a mind freeing thing, you know. Once you put your heart and soul into the craft and the people that you entrust have gave it the stamp, you know, your producer, your engineer, your people that you love, you know what I mean? And you feel confident in it, put it out. And some people are just not going to like it. It is what it is. It's very hard to deal with in the beginning, but everybody's not going to like your music, your art, your anything. Everybody doesn't like Drake. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody doesn't like Beyonce. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody doesn't like yeah. every. You know, everything is not for everybody. So, for the record, I love them both. <laughs> yeah, I love I love them all. But I know well. But some I'm people not, don't. Some people yeah. don't. Yeah, yeah. So it's like you have to understand. My music is not for everybody. It's just about putting your passion into it, and it gets to the people that it loves. When it comes to haters, child, it's almost it's good, honestly. But if you have too many haters. If more people are saying that it's bad than good, then you should read. No, serious. Now, then you should reevaluate because, no, seriously, like if you put out something and everybody says it's terrible, your close friends, everybody is like, oh, could be better. You might want to rethink. But if you put out something and 70 people like it and 30 people hate it, it's like, hey, it is what it is. You, you know, you take it and you embrace those people. You focus on the people that do and get them excited so that they want to share it, that they want to tell their friend, look at this artist, you know, never focus on the ones who don't. Mm -hmm. Love that. So kind of, you talked about this a bit, You about you trusting yourself and feeling it in your gut when you have a hit and stuff like that. So how do you really like, how have you learned to fully trust yourself as an artist and embody Rob Moss as this artist? Like, what do you do to mm. make it, like, help yourself get to get out of your own way? Shout out to Leia Stone. I love Leia Stone. Hey, Leia. That's, one of, that's one of the artists that I've always wanted to work with. We interviewed um, her last week. Oh, I got to watch that. I got to watch it. Is it posted? We're going to post everything. If you guys miss any of the lives, we post them on the Fake, fake Global website. So, Perfect. And also on the Instagram. So you should be able to check it out there. Perfect. Okay. Um, what was the question? You were talking just about, about, about how you learn yeah. to trust yourself. Like you said, when you have a hit or you sometimes you just know. Hey, love you too. Sometimes you just know. It's like, so I'm like, how have you learned to overcome that insecurity and get out of your own way? You kind of spoke to like speaking yeah. to the haters, but Rob you know, internally, how have you learned to really just trust yourself? Is it in the writing process and coming out with this new music that makes you trust yourself along the journey? How are you learning to trust yourself? Well, for me personally, it's a process. You know, it's an everyday process, you know what I'm saying, of not down. I am my own worst critic. I don't know if other artists are like this, but... I'm like that. I, yeah, you know, I'm a, we're perfectionists. We yeah. want to be the you best. Know, you know, we want the best. You want it to be perfect. You know what I mean? Yeah. So... For me, I still struggle with that. That's why anybody that follows me, they knows I don't drop a lot of music. Yeah. I'll drop some really great music yeah. and then focus, focus, focus. But I do 10 songs a day. I just don't drop them. You, you know, put your so, pad under and you do the work. Yeah, you know what I mean? But it's just like, you know what? That's a good question because I honestly don't really know the answer to it because I feel like I'm still in that process of becoming mm -hmm. confident in Rob Moss. I'm not going to lie. I personally get confidence from my supporters and mm -hmm. the people that support me. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So even if I'm not the most confident about something, when I have a show and somebody told me, you know, I drove three hours to be here, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Or, hey, this is my fourth time seeing you. You know, I love you. Or, you know, um, those are the types of things that gives me the confidence. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When somebody tells me, hey, you inspire me to write songs or, hey, I mm -hmm. love this song. Wow. I love That's what inspires me. Um, so it. I'm still learning. I'm not going to lie. I'm on this journey with y'all as far as still <laughs> learning how to be assured and yeah. who I am as Rob Moss um, and being assured, you know, in my sound. As far as the music, 
I still feel like I'm finding my sound as well. I'm still trying mm -hmm. to, you know, find out what works for me. I know I love to make a certain type of music, but mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out where can I be as far as the landscape of what music is, you know? So that's a question that hopefully I'll have the answer to sooner than later, but I'm trying to, you know, still trying to figure it out. Honestly. Absolutely, man. I love your transparency and your you know? vulnerability. And like, I'm sure that they love it too, because I feel the same exact way. Me being an actress, look at that one. Look, had to take a sip. Had to take a sip. I love it. I love it. I got about five battles back there. I'm just, I'm trying to. Period. Like, what were you saying about being an actress though? You said you feel the same. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Being an actress, I feel the same exact way. I feel like the confidence comes in waves and spurts because as an actress, you constantly put yourself out there for different auditions or whatever the case might be, whatever you're going up for. And you don't get any yeah. feedback. You either book it or you don't. So if you book it, you'll get contact from your agent. But if you didn't book it, you hear nothing back. So you may invest a lot into the journey. So the cool thing that I've learned to do is just to embrace, surrender to the journey and just have fun. Just do it because I love it, which is kind of like what you're doing. Like you making 10 songs a day just because you love making music. That y'all are never going to hear. If the byproduct comes out that you get a hit out of it, cool. And that's how it is with me as an actress. Like, if the byproduct comes out that I booked the role, cool, you guys will check me out on TV. But if it doesn't, I'm just simply doing it because I really love it. But with that, it does come with that struggle, that tug of war within myself of sometimes feeling, you know, insecurity, you know, when you think you're at a certain place, you think you're good. And just learn to really trust yourself in roles or say, for instance, you do get a role and you might be up against, you know, with other people that have way more experience than you. So now you're feeling Facts. like you have to get over the spirit of unworthiness and feeling like I do deserve to be in this space and I can contribute Facts. to that. Group. So Facts. I think there's a lot of different things internally, us as artists, that we experience that we're going to constantly experience through life. It's not like we're going to wake up tomorrow in a week with the answers as to how to trust ourselves. We're constantly learning to trust ourselves every day. And probably when we're old, we'd be 60 years old trying to learn how to trust ourselves to walk down the steps. Yeah, so it's, a, it's an ongoing learning. process. And, and that's the humbling thing about being an artist. You yes. know, like, you know, you can't, you never really got it. Yes. You yes. know, it's always more to learn. Well, I'm glad that we're on that journey together, for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. And I love that you said that. Thank you, Being an artist keeps you humble. It keeps you humble. You know, among, whether through uh, the people that are inspired by you, the people that you're inspired by, you're constantly putting yourself out there. You're constantly sharing parts of yourself with people that you might still struggle with or be insecure about, whatever the case might be. So it's a constant journey of And growth. it keeps me humble because, you know, you kind of got to go through that struggle before you get that success. So when you didn't been broke and sacrificed everything for music and, you know, eating ramen noodles for years, you know what I mean? It's like you, you, you gain that humility because um, the dream is not going to come overnight and it's not mm -hmm. going to come like how you think it's going to come. So it's, it's a humbling process all around. And it's also rewarding at the same time because you mm -hmm. know that it's art. And it'll live forever. So. And I love that you say that, though, that humbling process, because also to speak to that, when you get a super large fan base, keeping yourself grounded is extremely important. So you always being able to go back in your mind. Dang, I remember when I was eating Raymond noodles. So if you see someone in need, you're going to be more generous. Than I mean, no, for real. Seriously. Or even, even professionally, it's like, you know, I'll never forget. You know what I'm saying? Doing shows, you know, like now when I do shows, I know that everybody that's coming to a show is a real fan. So if I do a show and there are 30 or 40 people there, I know that these are my real Rob Moss fans. Now, 10 years from now, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, maybe God has opened the door and I'm playing arenas and state. Who, who knows? You know what I'm saying? I'll never forget that humbling process mm -hmm. of performing for 10 people, 20 mm -hmm. people, 30 people, mm -hmm. 50 people. You know what I, I mean? It. It's very I humbling, but you can't appreciate. I, I don't feel like you can really appreciate it unless you really see it. You know, mm -hmm. go like this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because then you really appreciate it when you get to it. I love that, man. I love that. I so, love this. Let, let's see. Oh, I'm so glad you're enjoying this. Let's see what my else brother other Carlos is here. Shout out to my brother Carlos. Uh, my brother Carlos Whitlow is hey, in here. Carlos. Yes, he um, inspired me to do everything. He is an incredible. Um, entrepreneur, singer, songwriter in Detroit. He has an organization in Detroit called SONG, and it stands for Saving Our Next Generation, and uh, it's an wow. incredible youth organization. It's the arts for youth. Sorry. Amazing. Shout out to him. Yes, salute to the king. We appreciate that. Someone says, I love your genuine personality, and then they say, is it better to be a solo artist or with a label? Um, oh, Y'all, this, this is so many... It's so many ways that that question can be answered. 
um, briefly, you kind of have to do both. Like, it's like, if you don't have any grind as an independent artist or any momentum as an independent artist, you're not going to make it to a label. They're not just signing strangers off the street anymore and making them into superstars. No, seriously, you know, back in the day, that's how they used to do it. Um, they're not doing it like that anymore. So you have to put in a certain amount of groundwork mm -hmm. now to even get into, you know, a meeting with a label. So yeah. I would recommend, you know, be an independent artist for as long as you can and maybe sign to an independent label. Now, if you're signed to a label that's independent, that's not major, and they can narrowly focus on you, that's a good route to do it. But the thing is with independent artistry is that everybody is not cut out for that. I'm mm -hmm. cut out for that. I love the music business. I love that part of it. Some people are just songwriters, just singers. Everybody mm -hmm. is not. And I respect artists like that as well. I'm not no business person. I'm not about to read 50 books. Everybody is not like that. Some mm -hmm. people, you know, have a manager, have a team to kind of help them, you know. So to be a successful, you know, artist, period, if you do want to make it to a label, you have to build up your own momentum. You got to have your own fan base. You got to have something you bring into the table anyway. So, um, but being an independent artist is, it definitely has its pros and its cons. You get mm -hmm. to be in control artistically. You get to do the songs you want. You get to put out the music you want to put out. And mm -hmm. you don't have to split the money as many ways. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? When it comes in. Um, that's what I love. As a songwriter, I get to make. So even if I only get 50,000 streams, I can still make all the money. I don't have to split any of the money. But when you're signed to a label, yes, you know, they may control the creativity. They may not necessarily, you know, um, give you that artistic freedom but they're going to give you that machine to make yeah. sure that you're on the tv that you have those platforms and that you can do that but you may not make as much money you know what mm -hmm. i mean or you may not have as much control so it depends on what's important to you you know mm -hmm. what i mean but for me personally what i plan to do is to really build up a strong momentum independently um and run my own independent label and then eventually once there is enough momentum i will want to do a joint venture with the major label i don't want to stay independent forever because i want to be a star eventually right you know what i mean but right. i don't want to just sign a 360 deal you know because you can just sign a deal and throw your life away and be famous and be broke you know what yeah I mean? so. that's that's facts that's facts i love that you said that oh, yeah. so you spoke you told a lot of different tips to new artists but if you can just solidify three tips what would you give to a new singer or new you know independent artist a new independent artist um one would be hone in on your craft have love and passion for the music itself that thing that's coming out of the speakers have as much love and passion and knowledge and you know like obsession with that as possible that mm -hmm. is number one because if you don't with everything that the music able entails you're not going to make it yeah. You know, everything that it entails to be an artist, if you don't love music, you're going to eventually quit. Trust me. Mm -hmm. um, so, one, hone in your craft. Two, have confidence as an artist. You know what I'm saying? Have an overwhelming amount of confidence in your artistry, even if you're not a confident person. Even if you don't think you're cute, when you go to be that artist, you better Come on be now. You, you, you know what I mean? Because me, I'm not naturally a confident person. I struggle with confidence. But when yes. I go to be on the stage or go to do a photo yeah. shoot or go to do something, I turn it on. It yes. is what it is. So number two that. would be, you know, have confidence. And then number three would be have, I want to say have fun, but that's some bullshit. Because it's not going to be fun all the time. <laughs> it's just not. It's just not. It is what it is. It's just not. It's going to be terrible. You're pulling your hair out. You're dying. You're crying. It's, you know, it is what it is. But um, <laughs> I would say number three would be to have knowledge and stay ahead of the curve. Don't yeah. just be like other artists. Don't just do. You know what? Scratch that. Number three would be do not compare yourself to anybody. Come on. Don't do it. Don't do it. That I don't care. Hard. The that only person I compare myself to is Jay-Z and Beyonce because those are the people that I want to be like. Yeah. You know what I mean? But as far as, yeah, you know, that, yeah, that'll mess with your confidence, especially in today's era where people make you feel like you got to have a certain sound. You got to have a certain look. You got to do this. You got to do all these runs. You got to do all of this. You got to have this type of voice. You got to have that. Actually, no, you don't. You just have to have passion for what you're mm. doing and mm. talent. You know mm. what I mean? So 
mm. break all comparisons mm. with, unless it's like a business comparison unless you're making a song and you're thinking like i want this to be able to play on frank ocean pandora station that's mm -hmm. business mind but as mm. far as you know comparing yourself to other artists what another person is doing don't do it because what i learned is that that person that you might look at and envy on social media you don't mm. know what they went through to get to where they are mm. and when you get to your success you're mm. gonna have people looking at you and envying you but they mm. don't know that you were broke for 10 years mm. you know what i'm saying so it's like even when I used to look and compare myself to other artists and what other people were doing, I had to stop and think like, well, I don't know what that person went through. I don't know the dedication that they went through mm -hmm. to get to where they are. So, okay. you know, don't compare yourself. Have passion for what you're doing mm -hmm. and have confidence. A word. Brother, you are Seriously. so good at these interviews. It's crazy. You ready? Oh, thank I'm you. Are you ready, girl? Look, look, look. She ready, he ready. Stop. But we no, ready. I, I, we ready. I love it. Like, I mean, the the notes you've given, I hope you guys are taking notes on this and writing this stuff down because, like, this is, Thank like, some legit good information. It's not even a question. Someone said awesome information. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Angela. Absolutely. Angela's Let's, vocals. Angela's vocals. That's my mama. Hey, Angela's vocals. <laughs> Your mom sings? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. you know what? Was it true with the whole family that was singing? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I remember that. Family. See, that's... I come from a singing family. <laughs> I remember you did. It was years ago. And you did a, it was like a Snapchat story of your family. And mm -hmm. everybody was singing. We're and singing. I remember I was like, the whole family could sing? The whole family could sing. The whole family could sing. Yes, it. absolutely. Yeah, I mean, brother, you've given so many different gems. For those of you guys that are just coming into our, our live here, what we up? have Rob Moss. He's a singer. He's a songwriter. He's a producer. He showed you even right there in his living room, he creates his own music, his own sound. Can you kind of tell them where they can find your music if they're interested in having a listen and kind of if you're working on something right now? Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Everywhere, um, everywhere. Um, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music. You know, a lot of people really like my music videos. Um, mm -hmm. I got about 11 music videos out. I love that one music video. When you dancing on the car. Oh, deserve it? Yes. <laughs> Come on, dancing on the car. Child. You be like. <laughs> yeah, feeling it, right? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, everywhere. If uh, Rob Moss Music, I got my website, robmossmusic.com. But just you know, Google, Spotify, Apple Music. I'm everywhere at this point. I just put out an EP, just a little something, you know. what I'm saying for my core core audience, you know, um, for the quarantine. It's called quarantine. Um, Love that. Bangers on there. Yeah, yeah. Love you know, that. I have to drop something. Cause I gotta go listen to that one because I haven't heard that one. Oh yeah, you know, I dropped it very low key. I didn't even. I haven't done any videos or any singles for it. I just. I really just dropped it for my core fans who've been begging me to drop music because I haven't. Mm, you were saying that they keep reaching yeah. out. <laughs> exactly. So um, I do have the quarantine EP um, and a lot, a lot of music, you know, so, you know, Rob Moss on any platform, honestly. I Love think. it. Well, brother, uh, if you guys want to follow his Instagram again, I pinned it is underscore Rob Moss. Go follow him on Instagram. My yes. Instagram is um, at Angelica underscore Marion. And also go follow the fate underscore global Instagram page so that you can see all industry updates. Cups all up, come on, What's up? Cups up, yeah. That's one of the songs on the new album. I can show oh. you guys. Look, <clears throat> that's one of the songs on the new album. But um, like I was literally. You want to have, let us have a listen? Oh, do you, well, you you guys want to hear something? You, you guys want to hear something? I thought that's what you were doing. You just went over to your your studio session. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Well, I was actually doing this right before you called. I was working on this song. I don't know if it's good enough to share yet. I just freestyled it a little bit. I don't okay. know how it sounds, though, sis. Let's see. Well, I mean, you don't have to play it. I mean, they can always go check you out on all of those different um, sites that you mentioned. Yeah, I mean, I want them to go check out. out that video you dancing on the car. Deserve, Deserve it? Yes, Deserve please it. check that one out. That's the one. Let me see. Let me see if I can play something. Well, they're going to end up booting us off of here in like five minutes, but I think we got a little bit of time. Oh, it's been people that people long? That it's yes our already yes it's been great and again guys make sure you're adding adding all of us for all of the information as well as uh the foundation for artistic talent and empowerment for all of these mentorship programs and these resources that we're going to be providing for you oh, you want you want to play us a little something this is from the new project y'all let me just hold on all right now y'all done got them pulling out the music 
see how long. Oh, that's you? Sicker than Corona. Oh. Yeah, y'all can go and check that out. That Where? one is out. Where is that it's, one? It's on. It's out. I just put it out. It's 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 a little hidden. It's a little hidden gem. It's called quarantine. It. I'm about to go blast it. I'm about to go blast it while I ride my bike. Well, it's brother, a good. It's a good workout project. Well, I love you guys. Thank you for having me on here. Yes. I really appreciate it. Like this was awesome finally being able to talk about all this stuff that's in my head. And mm -hmm. thank you guys for being an awesome audience or whatever this is. <laughs> they definitely are. They're they're an audience. With yeah. Us. yeah, audience because a lot of thousands of people watch these videos on the replay and on the websites and stuff. So again, we want to say thank you for coming on here. You could have been doing anything. You could have been writing music, but you're here with us. Educate anytime I'm here, on Chris, you know what? Anytime, anything you need. I am here. This has inspired me, honestly. Now I feel like maybe I should start talking and doing my knowledge more because you, oh, absolutely. Because you got care. a lot to share. You got yeah. a lot to share, and that's I'm not saying that lightly. So I mean, I'm sure everybody is walking away inspired. I hope you guys appreciate him. If you do, go ahead and hit the like button. Also, go ahead and follow him. Follow. Check out that music, y'all. Shout out. Y'all hear it? I'm bopping. Bopping, bopping. I love it. Well, brother, you wear your crown well. You've overcome so many different things. And you Thank still you, going. You too, queen. And I'm so excited for all that's to come for you. And you too as well. Keep going. We only up from here. And, and make sure okay. make sure everyone, you know, make sure you take care of your mental health and everything during this quarantine. Do not be discouraged. Your dreams are not over. Your life is not over. You know what I mean? Um, so just be patient and be positive, y'all. Amazing. Thank you, brother. Well, we Thank you, sis. Here, they All right. Talk. I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave. No, no, baby. But I got to go right now. Y'all ain't got a note out of it. Before you know it. <laughs> Love it. I don't want to leave. Y'all hear him blowing, y'all? <laughs> Just a little, just a little touch. Child, you get all types of hearts. Just all touch, just a little, just a little touch. You just have to get a hit with a little acapella. Make sure y'all follow you. me. We can't, we couldn't end without you hitting, hitting that note like that. You know, we got to hit just at least one note. Come on, this, this is me. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, peace out, sis. I love you. I cannot wait to love. watch this back later and have. Yes, love you. Peace. See you soon. Bye, guys. Thank you, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> the love. Hey.